My name is Mr. Isaacs, and I'm coming at you with my fourth period game design class this morning as I'm going to introduce this group to Minecraft Education Edition, which they'll be using extensively in the class. So for my purpose today, I kind of want to just showcase some of the specific features in Minecraft Education Edition. Um, my guess is a lot of these kids have played some Minecraft. Who's played mine? Who, who's, uh, who plays Minecraft or has played Minecraft? Yeah, they'll pick it up like nothing. All right, so I'm going to go in. I'm going to create a new game for our purposes here. And I'm going to create a new world. And I'll just call this M-E-E -E Demo. And we'll go, do I want to be? I'll start in survival. It doesn't really matter. Um, actually, no, I'll, well, yeah, I'll start in survival. And we'll keep a few settings here. I'm going to keep cheats on. I'm going to show my coordinates. I personally, especially if I'm creative mode doing stuff, I like to know my coordinates. Now, there's also some other settings here under classroom settings that when you're creating the game, you can set. Um, I will allow mobs, destructive items, etc. There are some things we can do here, though. And if I do set a mutable world, then you wouldn't be able to. People wouldn't be able to break anything in the world. Um, and whether or not I want to keep PvP or player versus player damage on, these are all just settings you can choose. I'm going to just stay with what they give us. And we're creating a new world here. Okay. So as you can see, because I set the position to show, I'm seeing my position. Okay. Um, typically, Minecraft Education Edition is Minecraft. Um, the interesting thing is, and I always like to kind of point this out, often when we sort of edufy something we it means we kind of take things away or make it overly educational in a sense or whatnot um the minecraft education team has been very careful to listen to teachers and students and not um do that in a sense what they have done rather though is added some neat features that actually kind of just enhance the opportunities for learning uh without taking away anything from the game and to show you some of those examples here I will go into creative mode for a minute. So I have cheats on so I could make these changes. Now, I'm going to give myself a couple of items that are not in the regular game. Okay? So one of them is the camera. Minecraft has a camera you can use. It also has a portfolio. Okay? Now, the purpose of these two items is so that you can take pictures of things in the game and the portfolio allows you to export this group of pictures you know out of the game to your computer now granted there are other ways to take screenshots and things but if you're working on a project in minecraft it's kind of nice that you can just snap pictures as you go with the camera so for one let's say i want to get a picture up close and personal with this cow i'm gonna right click into the air and I get that picture later in my portfolio I could give a caption to that now let's say I want to get a selfie with the cow here cow I can be here right and whoops that should have gotten a picture of me and the cow I don't see the me part oh you know what because I'm not showing right now Whoop. well there we go I could do it that way I suppose all right, well, there I am with the cow. There are a number of ways to do that, um, but there we go. So we've got me and the cow together. Um, okay, so that's kind of how the camera works. With the portfolio, if I right-click to see my portfolio, here's my selection of pictures that I've taken, right? So I can give them a caption. Say cheese, cow. Um, now, when I go to export these, what will happen is I will export my portfolio. Now, this is worth noting, okay? For you all in this class, what you'll generally want to do is if you go to, um, actually, mine won't show it, I don't think. Uh, when you're in this PC, you'll see an H drive, which is your personal drive on our network. So whenever you're saving or exporting things from Minecraft, putting it there is smart because then you can access it from other computers. For now, I'll just save it to my desktop or actually to documents. 
and I'll make a folder for Minecraft Education Edition, let's say, which I already, guess I already have. So I'll just save these. So my portfolio here, I might want to know which portfolio this is because everyone's going to be called portfolio. So I would possibly put the date with it. So what's today? 130? 31. 31. Oh, my. Okay, so I'm going to put my portfolio there, right? Now, the thing to note about this is, and let's see who kind of understands this process a little. So I just saved this in documents in, I think, the famous new folder. And there's my portfolio. You notice anything about the portfolio? Can you see it up there? Do you, what does it say here? What kind of file is this? Right. Anybody know what to do with a compressed zipped folder? What's that? <laughs> Extract it. So this is going to be something a lot of you are not going to realize, but now you will. So when you right click on this folder, if I choose extract all, it's going to now create a folder with my images. Now, since you're doing a lot of things with blog posts and things, these images you can now import you know, or upload to your blog and put them in your blog posts, okay? So again, when you're doing a lot of the quests that you're going to be doing in Minecraft, you're going to have the opportunity to take these pictures and then use them to tell a story. Sometimes you'll be creating tutorials where you'll want a whole set of screenshots showing each step of something, and that's how you would do that, okay? So that's one thing, or two, several things. Now, another nifty thing about Education Edition is... NPCs okay you might have played mods that have NPCs but the education edition and all the educators and students were very keen on the idea of having NPCs in the game now the super cool thing about NPCs is first of all there's my NPC right so I can do a number of things here I can change the skin not too many yet there might be more coming I can name the NPC um, what should we name this NPC? Henrietta, maybe? And Henrietta might tell us, guide us through part of the story. Okay. So here, I'm going to say this, right? Now, check this out. Under advanced settings, I can do a couple of things. I can add a URL. What does that mean? What can I have the NPC? A well, a link that'll so that'll take you outside of Minecraft into a web page. Or my most favoriteest thing about the new NPCs and what they've added is I could add commands. Anybody here familiar with command blocks and using command blocks? Yeah, they tell you what to do. They or they make things happen in the game, right? Uh, yeah. So in Minecraft Education Edition, your NPCs can issue commands. So it's kind of like having command blocks built into the NPCs. So I said I wanted to give you some uh, tools, right? So I'm going to give at P. Anybody know what at P means? Player? Yeah, but it's the nearest player, okay? Give at P, and I think we want to give him a diamond sword, okay? Now, if I don't choose button mode, the NPC will just give you these things. If I choose button mode, um, I can then have it be so that I actually click on a button to get it okay now I could add I think it's up to six commands so I might want to also give at P a diamond now is it shovel okay now we'll see shortly if that's the the right way it's supposed to be written um, maybe I'll also give give at P diamond uh, boots so let's start there just to see this all in action, okay? So in theory, oh, and I forgot to do these as buttons, okay? So diamond shovel. Again, you don't have to. I could have it be automatic. Um, and diamond, oh, wait, yeah, boots. And how about if I, um, I could also, I could do other things. I could summon uh, objects. I could I could summon mobs. I can teleport the player, and all these things that I could do with these commands. So you'll get comfortable with using these commands soon enough. So now here's an interesting thing about the game. When I'm the one creating the game, I'm in a mode called World Builder. 
So right now I'm in World Builder, okay? So I, in order to actually interact with this NPC, I have to toggle World Builder off. So slash WB is World Builder. So now I'm going to turn it off for a moment. Now this is me interacting with the NPC. Now the funny thing is, see how this says learn more? I think I accidentally chose the URL one instead of the um, instead of when I tried to give the player the what was I trying to give the player a the boots. So I'm not going to get the boots. So diamond sword. Oh, that's kind of funny. I got the diamond sword and the boots with one button, which it probably shouldn't have been. So that's kind of interesting. Why did it do that? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, you know why? All right, it did that automatically, I guess. That's interesting. The shovel, I do have to ask for separately. So I guess whatever I, whenever I interact with this NPC because of whatever I did wrong, it's giving me the boots. So let's go back to the advanced settings. And I am going to now go back and fix this. Oh, that's interesting. This is... Okay, so I did two things. I did something silly here. I made this a URL for diamond boots. I, I don't even know why it actually gave them to me. I'm going to trash that one. And what I did mean to do was make this a button for the diamond boots, right? Which is going to make me, for testing purposes, show you something else. So I want to, let's say, um, go out of World Builder. And let's say I want to clear my inventory so I could start this again to test it. I just lost 133 items. I guess I had a lot of, um, I think it was a lot of NPC eggs. So diamond boots, boom. Diamond shovel, boom. Diamond sword, boom. Okay, so that's how the NPCs work. Now, again, I could have this teleport me to another part of the game. So you could create some pretty neat things. Like I could create, like, let's say, some riddles where if I choose the right NPC or choose the right button for where to go, maybe I go to the correct next place or otherwise maybe I, you know, fall to my death or something. Okay, so all sorts of neat things you can do with them. I'm going to show you one last thing for today just so you have some stuff to work with. One of the other neat, unique things in Minecraft Education Edition are different size, like, signs. Like, you know how in Minecraft typically we have the sign, right? What's limiting about the sign in general that you might think about if you were writing a story in a game or using this in an educational environment? What's limiting about the, the sign? What's that? Yeah, how much you could write. Well, check this out. There's something called a slate, okay? There's something called a poster, and there's something called a board. Now, all of these items, whoops, let's make it day for a minute. Okay, all of these things, watch this. So, if I were writing a story, once upon a time, okay, and let's say I did, instead of that, I did the poster, once upon a time in a land far, far away, blah, 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 blah. Okay, that's going to give me more flexibility for what I, I mean. Look at how much more I could have fit. And then a board, you could fit a huge part of a story, okay? And, and these might come in handy for parts of your games or stories that you're going to include in here, okay? Or, again, if you're doing tutorial-type stuff, maybe you'll put a sign that'll explain something or an NPC that'll explain something for the player that's playing, okay? So we'll stop there for today. Thanks for watching. I hope you um, are excited about some of the things you can do in Minecraft Education Edition. We'll have more episodes like this where we'll highlight other features. And uh, have a great day.